Welcome, Coach. Uh, thank you for being here with us. We have Head Coach uh, Real Salde, Head Coach Pablo Mastrani to answer questions. We're going to start, first of all, with a statement about your thoughts on the match. No, I think it was uh, one of our more complete performances this year. Um, I, I thought uh, uh, one of our greatest attributes was the reaction we had when the ball turned over and we were able to really settle into the game and kind of dictate the game with the ball, which is really important. I think the guys uh, up front did a fantastic job of of creating some really good opportunities. Um, and, uh, you know, I think overall, and then and then obviously then dealing with the red card, um, that showed a lot of character uh, in the group and the way they uh, navigated some tough moments. Um, but again, I think it was uh, one of our more complete performances against one of the best teams in this league. And, and it speaks volumes to the, uh, the character and the quality that we have in the locker room. We're now going to open the floor for questions before we go to Zoom. Any questions on the floor? Uh, over here. Oh, this one. Pablo, what was the mood like at halftime? Because you'd had more of the ball, you had the better chances, but you didn't have a goal. You've been down that road with Seattle before. Were people encouraged because of the way it had gone or discouraged because you hadn't finished? No, I think uh, definitely encouraged. Um, again, I think we did a lot of what we wanted to do with the ball, and it was the final pass or, or the, the shot that kind of let us down. And, and, you know, at home, knowing that in the 60th minute, the game's going to open up. And, uh, you know, I think the second goal is, is case in point where it's going to open up. Chicho got on the back shoulder. Pablo played a beautiful ball. And then, you know, Chicho's quality finished it, you know. And I think uh, the first goal as well, um, we found a, a lot of space between the lines. Um, and, and, again, it goes back to what I've been saying all year is a, a good defending team um, translates into a good attacking team. And, and when you have... You know, ten guys ahead of the, you know, behind the ball, working hard for each other. And you're going to find yourself in good situations to break and, and break into space. And so, um, the mood was good. We we made a couple adjustments um, with with how they're looking to find Ruiz and making sure that one of our center backs were dealing with that. That was, but other than that, um, I, I think our our spacing in the attack, our our general play in the attack was was really really good. Um, and so, you know, I think. Yeah, I thought it was a really good performance. Anderson Julio usually goes directly to goal to see him hold up and, and look for Rubio Rubin. Is that something you've talked to him about, worked with him on? In a moment, he just turned over a new leaf? What no, happened? No, I, I think it's been, you know, again, it's been a part of the process, and, and, and uh, his understanding as well has, has improved tremendously. Um, you know, he's in a great run of form, and uh, a play similar to that happened in training um, last week, I believe. And uh, a couple of his teammates said, "Listen, I was I was wide open in the box, and you're taking a shot from a bad angle. Um, so I, I, you know, I think he's a, he's 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 making good decisions, and especially when you're down a man, um, I, it was it was a top-notch play from Anderson, and obviously a fantastic finish from Rubio. The last 20 or 30 minutes of the first half is that as well as the team has pressed and repressed in a long time? Yeah, I think so. I, I think we kind of got away from that a little bit. Um, and that's what I said to the guys after the game, is our, is our reactions in the repress um, or our reactions to getting into shape quickly was, was as good as it's been. And again, against a team like Seattle that likes to play between the lines, like to you know, bring their wingers in, similar to what we do, um, it, they're a tough team to play. And the only way you can unsettle a team like that is by physically being, being better um, and then mentally being sharp. And, and I think that type of work led to the second half. You don't always see it when you're doing it in real time. It's, it's like wearing uh, a boxer wearing another guy down with jabs. It's not, you're not going to knock him out now, but you're putting yourself in a good position to be able to do so later. Um, in the first half, there was a little bit of frustration with officiating. Maybe there was that scrum kind of at the end between players a little bit. And I feel like that can kind of be a, you know, a, a crossroads at times between you know, either you know, going a, a positive direction or a negative direction as a team, right? What was it in those first six minutes of the second half where that you saw like, that the team was able to react to maybe some of that frustration and get those two goals as quickly as they did? Yeah, well, I think it was more you know, guys, the, the, the guys wanted to get after it. You know, I think it was just more you know, uh, when, when opportunity meets preparedness, you, you, you have good luck. And, and, and so I think the guys were prepared. They came out. And that's why I said the first 10 minutes of the second half is going to be critical, right? We want the same reactions. We want the same bite. Um, and the game's going to open up. And so I think the guys just came out and did a fantastic job to really work their way into the game and, and, and some fantastic goals tonight. 
And then this was the first uh, we've seen of Rubio uh, for about a month or so. Um, what have you seen from him this, this week in training? He's been back from uh, the Guatemala National. Yeah, he's been sharp. You know, when you come back from uh, international duty, um, it, there's uh, I used to experience it myself. There's like a week-long force field you have um, where the game at the international level is always going to be faster. Decisions have to be made quicker. Um, but there's an air of, uh, of confidence that follows you back. And uh, he's been sharp in training. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, with so many players, uh, you know, that we have up front is just finding a, a, a good position for him. He's played on the left for us in the past. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's almost having like three forwards on the field, you know. And, and so the mindset is we, we want attacking players out there. Um, but again, he did a really good job of, of, of defending in, in a tough situation as well. And again, so it's really about the guys working hard for each other. Um, and this is something that I've talked about since the beginning of the year. Um, and it just feels like there's no quit in the team. And I think for me, that the, the mindset is the most important. And all the performance, you know, is, 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 is an afterthought. But the, when the mindset's right, we have the quality in this team to, to be a very good team in this league. Next question. Hey, Paulo, thank you for your time. Um, I, I want to go back kind of to the red card situation. Obviously not ideal for, for any coach to have to deal with that situation. Um, in, in the past, and maybe a tendency at times when a, a defender gets a red card is kind of to load up your team more defensively, especially when you have a lead. Um, I noticed that you brought in Rubio Rubin and Anderson Julio. Um, can you kind of take us through that decision-making process and what the instruction was that you gave to, to Anderson Julio and Rubin? Well, again, I think in those situations, you're obviously down a man. And so making sure that he's doing a good job of dealing with the two center backs. Um, and then it, once they progress the ball uh, into our uh, you know, defensive third, his, his, his job was basically dealing with the six and one of their pivots. And then making sure one of our pivots is always stepping out. And I think tonight we did a really good job of, of neutralizing Jao Paulo and Albert um, and Obed as well. Um, the pivots did a fantastic job. I mean, um, Ojeda continues to I impress um, and, and really lead the grit um, and in and, and the engine room. You know, him and Pablo have been fantastic and have been really catalysts to, to what we've been able to achieve to this point. Um, and then Rubio's role was, uh, was again, I, I, I think when you're down a man, you're going to have a lot of spaces open. And for, for me, it was just be really clear with Oviedo. Um, who's defending the half space and who's going out to the wide guy. And, and there's a couple times where they're defending in the same line, which is always death uh, for a team. And so making sure we're occupying different, different channels was really important for Rubio. Um, and I think Bodie, and the same thing with Bodie. Is, is, and, and again, Bodie started his career as a winger, has, has now been a fantastic right back. And so those, the, those type of actions for, for Bodie are, are second nature. And, so, and again, they're both attacking players. And, and, and sometimes you can do you can bring in defenders. What that lends itself to from a, co from a player's perspective is when the coach goes, all right, let's bring in two center backs. The mentality is we're going to just drop in. And that's not what I want. You know, we want guys on the field that when we get the ball, we can create an opportunity like we did in the second half. And Rubio's goal really nailed it. Um, and then I kind of want to shift to talk about the defensive job um, by the guys today. Um, there's a lot of combinations with a bunch of different guys, personnel coming in, obviously, with the red card as well. Just can you talk about how pleased you are getting another clean sheet against a really good quality Seattle side and how good some of the guys played, like Emeka and Nelly and Brian Oviedo? Uh, they were all great. They were all great. And again, in this phase, in, 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 the, in the form that we're currently in, all I talk about is defending. And, and obviously, because it is so important to win anything with good defending. If you go behind it with a team like Seattle, you're chasing it, you know. And so, um, I mean, the buy-in from, you know, Chicho and Danny and Sava and Luna, I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And what that lends itself to is having more of the ball. And then when you have quality, the, the, the attacking will take care of itself. Um, and, and I thought the uh, center backs did a great job of providing really good angles and making them work def defensively. I thought switching the point of attack was – was spot on today. Uh, again, I, for me, it was our most complete performance of the year. Thanks, Pablo. We're going to do two more questions, one each, before hey, we Pablo. go to Zoom. Uh, Brennan from Random Fan Podcast. Um, you, they sub three at half. Did that change anything tactically, or did you just have the confidence from the get-go? 
No, um, we don't change. We do what we do. And, and I've said this in the past, I, I think good teams change. I, I think if you want to be great, you know what you're trying to achieve in all phases of the game so well that you force the other team to change. You know, I, I think that's just, that's just my mindset. Um, and what it's lend itself to is a group of guys that it doesn't matter who starts this game, who starts the next game, it's so clear as to this, the, our, our game model, style of play, you name it. Guy comes in, there's not a doubt when the ball's on that side of the field, what I'm meant to be doing. And that only comes from constant reinforcement, constant reinforcement. And so it's been seven months that we've been, that we've been working this. And so when, when they bring in three subs, then we're, we gotta keep doing what we're doing. And when they bring in two more, we gotta keep doing what we're doing because it's working, right? And so that's, that's the mindset that, that, I, that I coach from. And that's the mindset that the players have is that everyone can step in and do a great job. And that, I think that's been really the secret of our success this year. And one other thing, um, it was a sh little bit of a shock to see Vera up that far up the field on one of those plays. Is that something coached or is that kind of a... You, you know, again, I, I think um, a, another big philosophical, philosophical coaching um, tenet of mine is to allow the players to be who they are. Right. I'm not going to I never tell center backs to go on these long forays. I would never do that. However, that's a part of Vera's game and he does it on Saturday. And I know he'll do it on Saturday because he does it on Tuesday and Wednesday. And, and then the, then then. OK, so he likes to do that. So then how do we we just have to make sure one of our midfielders holds in, in a good position. So instead of taking away what Chicho does, what Vera does, what what any of the guys do, it's really how do we work around the, their strengths, not take away what, because again, I think this game has to be played with joy. And if a coach is saying, no, don't do that, don't do that, then it's like, oh, what, what, what am I doing this for? And so I, that's the way he expresses himself. And this week in training, he went on like a 70 yard jaunt and, and buried it upper 90. So um, I'd be silly as a coach to say not to do that, having seen what I've seen this week. Felicidades. This is going to be in Spanish, okay? Thank you. Uh, Pablo, ya te preguntaron todo, así que te voy a hacer otra pregunta. El siguiente partido tiene una historia con el Real Soleil y su pasado. Eh, el sentimiento que, que hay en el público es grande. Hay un sentimiento parecido contigo y con los jugadores. ¿Han hablado de eso? ¿Conocen del pasado y la historia del Real Soleil con el Monterrey? Sí, yo conozco la historia. Eh, era un partido donde... Eh, podían ganar el Champions contra Monterrey. Um, pero para mí siempre es otro partido para mejorar. No, no lo veo como un, un partido que... No, no, o sea, no podemos ganar la Copa ganando con este partido. Tenemos que ganar este partido y seguir para adelante. O sea, lo vamos a, vamos a mirar muchos videos eh, el lunes sobre, sobre Monterrey. Sabemos que andan muy bien en la Liga MX y, que siempre, y tienen una un grande historia y son un equipo muy grande. Creo que están número uno en el CONCACAF, de, de, de todos los clubes en CONCACAF y sabemos que va a ser un, un desafío grande, pero tengo mucha confianza en nuestro grupo y espero que jugamos un buen partido y sacamos un buen resultado. Some questions, uh, John Lupo. Um, Pablo, I thought that Chicho had. You said that this was the team's most complete performance of the season, but I thought that Chicho individually was absolutely brilliant tonight. Not just the goal he scored, but you know, creating for others. The shot, even though it was blocked, that Jefferson eventually scored for the goal. His awareness when Seattle was a little scrambled there to just pick up the ball and have that shot. His vision. And his and the his showing off his speed to get by Regan and score that beautiful individual goal. I really thought that this was one of the more terrific individual performances we've seen from a player in a while. Yeah, no, I thought Chicho was fantastic tonight. Um, and, and and again, and we, I, I think we got to remember it's his fourth game with this team, and, and and so I think relationships are starting to to build. They understand that you know his tendencies. He likes to drop into the pocket. 
um, which he's fantastic at. He likes to make runs in behind. Um, so, again, Pablo in, in training, you see the connection between Pablo and Chicho playing in behind. Um, and so I think with more familiarity uh, with his teammates, I think he'll continue to be uh, you know, a killer in front of goal, a killer in our link up. Um, and, and now more than ever, we've, we're occupying the space right at the top of the 18, um, which is something that we haven't been able to do in the past. And, and so he's, he's definitely attracting a lot of players his way. And then when you have guys like Luna and Sava and, and, and the rest of the crew, it's, it's really making us a, a better team. So I agree. I think he had a, a complete performance and, and uh, I couldn't be more happy with his integration with our group. We are going to do one last question, uh, Jada Evans. Thank you. Um, just wanted to ask. Obviously, Chicho changes your uh, you know, changes your team completely, but at the same time, you guys have also played very well um, against the Sounders at home. Does that factor in at all, or it, you know, as far as the the lead up, or a game like this could be tricky in a sense that you've had such uh, strong success against them? And then you know expect to have that again, basically. No, you know we didn't we didn't talk about that leading up to this game. What we talk about is is improving every day. And and I think when you're in a decent run of form, I think uh, the biggest impediment to, to 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 growth is I think listening to to all the outside noise and 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 how good we are uh, playing at the moment. Um, and so for me, it was a really focused week of training. Um, the guys were dialed in. Um, and again, I think it's so cliche, but we want to win every game we play. And I think the only thing, the only way to do that is to bust your tail Monday through Friday, work hard together, um, and make plays. And, and I think tonight we did all that. Thank you, Coach. Thank uh, you. Thank you for all the media members that uh, attended, attended today's press conference. Uh, I remind you guys that there's a match on Wednesday. Uh, thank you for your courage and for your support. Okay.